Good day, fellow learners. Once again, this is Charmento, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus, joining you for another learning and teaching session. This time around, we're going to talk about case number four. And this is about fat embolism and fat embolism syndrome. But before we get to start, I'd like to ask you to join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NPLEX RN application and review to 100 nurses. Primarily, the, these colleagues of ours are coming from the Visayas and Mindanao here in the Philippines and would like to give them equal chance of pursuing their great American dreams. So this is through our scholarship program. So to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos and please don't skip. Thank you very much for doing so. On to our next concern. I'd like to give this public advisory that me, Dr. Ray Agapus, and the mentors of the Ray Agapus system are not part of another center named Gapus Review. So you always have to look for our full name, Ray A. Gapus Review System. That's where you get to see me. And of course, the legit mentors of the Ray Gapus Systems who are trained on the next generation NPLEX RN, as well as on our trademark functional concepts, which is unique to the Ray Gapus system. You don't find it anywhere else in the world. Okay. So we'd like also, I'd like also to tell everyone that the Ray Gapus system have the following mentors. You have mentor Che, mentor Francis, mentor Misi, mentor Shans, mentor Marisol, mentor McLean, and mentor Nicole, who are manning the Philippines. Of course, we have a separate set of mentors for our international classes worldwide from more than 30 countries and counting. Okay, so if you don't see us in your class, that's not a Ray Gapus system class. On to our case number four, okay. So this is about fat embolism, and let me share with you some functional concepts. Once again, a functional concept is a word, a phrase, a sentence, or even an entire paragraph that gives you a sense of direction as you try to deconstruct questions on the next generation NCLEX. So fat embolism is the presence of fat particles within the circulation, specifically the microcirculation in the body, while fat embolism syndrome is the systemic manifestation of the presence of a fat emboli. Okay, fat embolism syndrome, therefore, is most often due to long bone and pelvic fractures. So these are the things that we need to look for if we suspect that there's fat embolism in our client. So we have to check whether the client had history of falls or history of hip arthroplasty. And uh, remember, there are three major diagnostic criteria of fat embolism syndrome, and this includes respiratory insufficiency, neurologic impairment, and the presence of rash. When you see these three, look for the specific symptoms, which includes, and these are contained in the acronym CRID. You have confusion, rash, which is described as petechial, irritability, and dyspnea, or respiratory distress. Now, note that when you speak of the respiratory insufficiency, we have several manifestations here. Primarily, you have your dyspnea or respiratory distress. And when you speak of irritability, that in part could be attributable to the decreased oxygen in the blood. And then neurologic impairment is manifested by confusion. And of course, the characteristic petechial rash or bluish or brownish rash. Now, let's move on to the next functional concept. The most significant feature of fat embolism syndrome is the severe respiratory symptoms that may progress to acute respiratory distress syndrome, which simply means it's important for the nurse to take note of how the client is breathing. There could be uh, tachypnea, or there could be dyspnea, or there could be shortness of breath. Pay particular attention to the uh, oxygen saturation levels of the client. And the most important thing is you have to do this monitoring regularly on a continual basis. Now, the minor diagnostic criteria of fat embolism syndrome are, remember, the acronym FALTER, fever, anemia, low platelets, or thrombocytopenia, which predisposes the client to bleeding, tachycardia, eye problems, specifically the presence of um, blood spots in the retina or retinal hemorrhage and chondis. And of course, the presence of renal problems, specifically the presence of fat in the urine. This is known as your lipiduria. 
or the presence of fat in the urine. So for a client with fat embolism syndrome, prone positioning helps in improving oxygenation. So it's best, this is actually an independent nursing function. So if you suspect that the client could be having fat embolism syndrome, if there are no spinal cord restrictions associated with um, injury or trauma to the spinal cord, it is best to put the patient on prone position. So fat embolism syndrome has no standard treatment. Supportive care is usually provided. Now, when, you, when we say supportive care, simply means a specific intervention targets a specific symptom. So what are the things that we need to do? So priority definitely would be to address the decreasing oxygen in the blood or hypoxemia. So we have to give oxygen. Then we administer IV fluids. Blood thinners could be given specifically your heparin because heparin would accelerate the uh, excretion of lipids from the body, okay? And that's through the blood, okay? Corticosteroids or methylprednisolone and of course, ventilatory support. So here's case number four. We have a 72-year-old female client in the emergency department due to a fall. Now notice that the first sentence is giving you already an idea of what the case could be. But take note, when you get to read the first sentence, this looks like at first glance as an orthopedic case. But once again, when you're doing case analysis for the engine, it's very important that you read from the first sentence up to the last word. So let's move on. X-ray reveals fracture of the femur on the right side. And previously, the client had a total hip arthroplasty. So that gives you a clue now because the patient is having symptoms associated with femoral fracture as well as a history of hip arthroplasty. So you have fracture of the long bones. The client had traumatic fracture. So after three days of hospital confinement, the client suddenly develops dyspnea, tachycardia, confusion, and restlessness. There you go. You have approximately three of um, the major criteria, specifically your dyspnea, confusion, and restlessness. So that should give you the clue. But once again, you have to relate it to the history of the client. The client has had femoral fracture and in the past, the client had hip arthroplasty. Now, notice that the symptoms of what could be fat embolism syndrome occurred three days after the client has been admitted. Now, usually the onset of symptoms of fat embolism syndrome could range from 48 to 72 hours after the traumatic fracture, or sometimes it could go as early as 12 hours. So let's move on and let's read through. So which of the following interventions is the highest priority of the nurse in providing care to the client? Is it one, IV access for fluid infusion, two, administration of oxygen using non-rebreather mask, three, heparin infusion, or four, position the client on semi-fowler. Now, remember that the best position of the client should be prone. So we eliminate number four. Heparin infusion could help, but it's not the immediate priority. So we're left with... IV access for fluid infusion or administration of oxygen using non-rebreather mask. The best answer definitely, as we've talked about early on, is the administration of oxygen, primarily because oxygen helps decrease the surface tension of the fat globules, thereby minimizing the pain that could potentially result from the decreased oxygen and the buildup of lactic acids. Now, Pay particular attention also to the fact that a non-rebreather mask should be used. Why are we using a non-rebreather mask? Because this could administer adequate amounts of oxygen quickly. And uh, therefore, this could help address the deficiency in oxygen of the client at a faster rate than the other methods. Okay. Therefore, the best answer is number two. Okay. So that's going to be administration of oxygen using non-rebreather mask. Okay, so with that, I just hope that you learned something today while you're watching our instructional video. And so my wish is for everyone to be like our hundreds and thousands of pastors from more than 30 countries worldwide. And we have here Jane Deneo Serrano from the Philippine Women's University who passed at the age, the NGN at the age of 60. And of course, we have others who joined 
our Passers Club. So if you want to join our Passers Club, let me give you some pointers. The first one is you have to learn how to navigate technology-based learning environment. At the Ray Gapo system, we integrate technology with very, very streamlined content. So it simply means we have the fusion of two of the best things that you have to focus on when you're preparing for the test. And that would mean great content plus great technology. So we've got it all for you. And of course, our learning tools are uniquely created based on Gen Z learner characteristics. And these are internationally published. We also have our own course shells where you can watch videos, take short quizzes or long exams anytime, anywhere. So that serves as our omni-channel. And the third requirement is that you should be in a conducive environment. That should keep your focus. At the Ray Gapo system, we maintain our class size to reflect just what our facilities can accommodate. And feel free to come at our headquarters, the Ray Gapos building in United Nations Avenue, and utilize our simulation room for the next generation NPLEX. And of course, you get to see here one of the classes that we conduct regularly on a monthly basis. You have a choice of whether doing a five-hour class a day, a two and a half hour class a day, or just a two hour class a day. So which simply means we're very flexible according to your needs and schedules. So I'd like to invite you to join us for our next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. Our fee starts at 3,499 and the inclusions are the following. So your choice of live face-to-face -face class or live virtual class or on-demand unlimited video recorded lessons plus our QBank and our three books, our NGN strategies and sample questions that you will definitely experience with me, either virtually or live face-to-face -face at Ray Gapos building at the United Nations Avenue. Please feel free to there by. And of course, join me in my quick fix session that's being done every month. And that just requires 24 hours of your month, okay? So you can choose either weekdays, AM or PM class or just whole day weekend classes. So it's your call. So give us, send us a message at info at ragapusreview.com or give us a call at 0906-201-9383. Once again, that's 0906-201-9383. So this is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapus at your service. And once again, telling everyone, this great reminder of ours at our Ray Gapo system. One functional concept a day keeps your NCLEX RN fears away. See you in my next video.